before we get onto the offshore aspect sure. of it, let's come back to you trying to explain to me yeah. how I make sense of this long-term thing. Over longer-term, markets are driven by very simple facts. Very right. simple. And the biggest single one is interest rates. Okay. It's an excellent rule of thumb. It's never let me down yet. When interest rates are high, do not own shares. When interest rates are low, buy shares. So we and should all be all buying right now. Correct, yeah. Because interest rates are low here and worldwide. Of course, when interest rates are low, they're low for a reason. And the reason is things aren't good out there. So it's psychologically, it's 180 degrees different to what you feel. When things are bad, you must buy. And when things are good, you must sell. Because okay. the market works. The market says, the market looks at ahead and doesn't say it doesn't say what's happening now it says what's going to be happening in two years time and if interest rates are low now more than likely the economy will be doing well in two years time so the market moves almost against the cycle but okay. when you look over time just very simple go and look at the returns on the markets versus interest rates the best returns are when rates are low the worst returns are when rates are high so that's logical and it makes sense but when you live every single day in the market, and one day it's up three, the next day it's down four, and especially like we've seen yeah, you know, two years ago with the credit crunch when the market fell 40%, you don't sometimes see the bigger picture. You say, well, look, it's fallen 40%. Now is not the time to sell. You start to panic. And that's yeah. the difference between long-term investing where you say, I'm just riding it. I'm going to ride it out. I mean, our market now, it fell from 33,000 to 16,000. It's now back almost at 30,000. So it's virtually, it's 10% from its record high. But a lot of guys sold at 16,000 because they were worried it's going to 10,000. Yeah. They didn't take that bigger picture. So right now is a good time to buy equities yeah. here at home yeah. and abroad. Yeah. The market's not expensive where it is now. The, the offshore aspect of it, yes. let's have a look at that now. Because we have... In terms of the, the Reserve Bank regulations, I, I think you can now, as an individual, um, take off and... Uh, yeah. uh, Look, uh, unless you seriously... Everyone wishes they had yeah. it, but it's what, four million? Yeah. Unless you're seriously rich, you can take as much money offshore as what you want to. So 99.9% .9 of the population can take as much money offshore as what they want to, because you know, I don't think there's terrible many people who've got four or five million rand mm. more than that to invest. So. Yeah. Effectively, there's no exchange control. Let's let's say, let's say that you, let's say that we were seriously rich. Come on, yeah. wait, let's dream. Yeah, we can all dream. Yeah. You see, he smiles when I say let's dream. We he smiles, dream. eh? Let's dream. Let's say that you and I have four million rand each, yeah. and we're going to take that offshore trollala, trollala, trollala. Mm. What would you, once you finish trollalaing, yeah. do with that four million okay. rand? The, first of all, before we look at that, the biggest reason why you go offshore is to get diversification out of the RAND. Because the RAND's been wonderful the last year and a half, but we all remember the, in the past when the RAND has been slaughtered. Yeah. The RAND is a cyclical currency. You're going to get strong years and you're going to get weak years. So, so that's cyclical, your first reason. So it goes yeah. well, then it yeah. gets sick. And then right now well, we're in the, we're in the good sick. part of it. So they call it cyclical. Yeah. When interest rates go up in two or three years' time worldwide, the RAND will probably weaken. So you go out to get diversify out of the RAND. So you don't put all your eggs in one basket. Same as you don't buy one share, you shouldn't have one currency, which is the RAND. Okay. So that's your first step. Then going overseas, there are many more avenues available to you. You can buy emerging markets like China or Russia directly. You can go into developed markets. You can buy global property. Their hedge fund industry or alternate fund industry is far more developed than, than ours. But the biggest reason, certainly us as, as institutional managers, the biggest reason we go overseas is to diversify out of the RAND. So that's the biggest single reason. What, what are you diversifying into? We Other also currencies go, or yes. property? Or We're not buying property. Why? Uh, maybe, maybe we should. I don't know. Well, I'm not an expert you? on you? it. I'm not an, I just don't know enough, and maybe we let you go, should go do some studying. All well, I know maybe is you should make, take my suggestion, and yeah. I'll just send you the invoice. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah it's like my, it's like my <laughs> when I ask the family doctor about for, for medical advice at a family lunch, he wants to charge me, mm. but he can ask me investment advice. <laughs> <laughs> but let's put that. Let's, let's, let's put that, that, that aside. That's a, that's a first round of applause. Yeah. Wayne's actually made a joke yeah. on a television show. Make I can't a joke believe it. Again. Look. Overseas property, we're very happy mm -hmm. that we don't own any because that got slaughtered. I mean, property in the UK, the US and Europe, but maybe now is the time to buy. 
But it's yeah, very, I was going to say maybe two yeah. years ago would have been a great time to buy. Yeah, but then you then you got you got cleaned out, eh? Well, you mean be off, off, off after the crash? When everything oh, yes, fell yeah. over the cliff. Oh, very much so, yeah. yeah. Look, and now, if you once again, and I come back to my, yeah. my word for tonight, gearing, mm. if you gear that properly, oh, you can get a you've got a low out. interest rate. Yeah. Well, and that's virtually nil. Yeah. It's virtually nil. No, and maybe that is an idea, and maybe we should all look at it. Because Jeez, you are so stupid. I can't believe that you haven't even considered property, and here I am sitting uh, on a show like this, and I'm suggesting. Well, that's, that, that, that's why we come here to learn as well, you see. Yes. Um, but overseas, we, we run balanced portfolios very similar to what we've got here. So we've got, we've got equity, we've got government bonds, and they've been very good this last year. They've been excellent investments. And we've got uh, emerging market, so we go directly into China, directly into Russia, etc. But it's still relatively small in our funds. Okay, now let's, let's go back to Trollala and Wayne and Jeremy have gone overseas. We've flown over on our aeroplane and with four million rand and we've mm. put it there. Um, how do you know that when you go to a fund manager there yeah. and you, you're saying we should be looking at the majority of that in equities? Probably over time, yes. Um, and you say to him, I want to go into emerging markets, that he doesn't come and invest it back in South Africa? That's the problem. Now, now we specifically limit our emerging market exposure because South Africa is an emerging market. Yeah. So you don't want to double up your risk in case emerging markets go wrong. So most of our money overseas is in good old fashioned UK equity, US equity, European equity and developed world bonds because we've already got 90% of our money in South Africa which is an emerging, is an emerging market. market. But that's our view. That's because we want to just drop the risk a little bit of emerging markets. Okay, now uh, le let's let's by talking offshore, let's actually come back to South Africa. Yes. Because a lot of people, I don't think, realize that they are getting offshore exposure in South Africa. In South Africa Huge. through a, Huge. a unit trust fund. Or so, yeah. I mean, or if they, if, yeah. because We've got if, a, if you're a unit yeah. trust fund manager, I would imagine you are buying things like BAT. Everything. And, 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 uh, well, you, if you look at our, our, our share market's quite unique because it doesn't actually represent South Africa. About 60%, if not 70%, by the way, of our share market is actually global companies that because of historic reasons are still listed on our stock market. Richmond's a global company. SA Breweries is total global company. Right. Anglo's, Billiton are global companies. Old Mutual's a global company. You know, there are, these are serious heavyweights. So about 60% of our companies listed actually got very little to do with South Africa, very little. So you're already getting massive exposure. However, you're getting a big weighting towards mining shares on our stock market. And mining shares means China at the moment. So if China does well, mining shares will do well. China does badly, mining shares will do badly. So you've already got a very, very big emerging market exposure via our stock market. In fact, you can look, it's our retail sector, there's a couple of engineering companies, a couple of paper and packaging companies, and our banks. Those are the only, and sorry, and building and construction. Those are the only sectors that actually represent South Africa. South Africa. And that's why people sometimes look at this and say, we cut, we cut interest mm -hmm. rates, why didn't our stock market go up? The reason is the U.S. fell. So our market's way more influenced by global uh, events mm -hmm. than, what's, uh, than what's happened in South Africa. That's why, I mean, it seems strange to say, but... In South Africa, let's just say there's a negative political event. A politician stands up and says something. Oh, well, that happens every day. Yeah. People say, why didn't the market fall? It's because it's not actually all that relevant. What happens to U.S. interest rates or Chinese industrial production is a far bigger driver of our share market than actually what happens domestically. So we could actually turn around to our politicians and say, you can say the stupidest things you want, as you are wont to do on a daily yeah. basis. It's actually not going to You can to say what you like. Just don't... Do, just don't do stupid things. You can talk about well, stupid do things, but well. don't do... No, I, I, that, that may be a little bit unfair. Look, politicians are politicians, and they're the same worldwide. But if you look at the way the ANC has run the economy since 1994, it's of the best in the world. I mm. mean, I, I, promise, you, I promise you when Barack Obama goes to bed at night time, he wishes his government had the same financial position as our government. So sometimes you've got to but just but divide that, the two. That's probably the only area. I don't dispute where, that. Where, no, where no, they have I don't, I don't dispute that, but at least they have succeeded. Yeah.
No, that's true. Yeah. Right, now let's go back to Trollala, 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 yeah. and Wayne and Jeremy have arrived in... Where would we be arriving in, Wayne? Come on, where are we going with our four million rand? Well, we can't go to a tax haven because they're a little bit out of favour. Let's go to London, why not? It's a bit doom no, and gloom. yesterday. Why would you want to go to well, London? We can go to Bermuda. <laughs> Where, where would you invest money? If, if you're taking your money offshore, well, look, what would you I, do? I'm, I'm not an expert on, on overseas and overseas investment houses. All I know is Investex got overseas. They've got investment house overseas. So is Old Mutual. So is Sunlum. We've also got one. So I would maybe stick to a name that you know from South Africa. And then you can deal via the, the local branch just using their offshore investment cap capabilities. So I wouldn't necessarily go and try and hunt for an offshore manager. All of our local, all of our big local companies have got offshore management capacity. So you clear your money through Reserve Bank, you yep. get a SARS tax certificate saying you, you go paid to your, your local, tax. You go to your local investment house, whichever one you fancy, they can process the whole thing for you in South Africa. And then you can literally sit down with somebody yeah. face to face in South Africa and say this is what I want yeah, out of my equity discuss, portfolio. They can discuss your needs and requirements and your time horizons etc etc and yeah that, that's what I would do. I wouldn't necessarily go and try and find an overseas investment house or a private wealth manager overseas. I just don't think we've got the expertise. We just haven't spent enough time examining it. Cash you say overseas well, nothing. There you get you're earning absolutely nothing. nothing. And I mean, other than diversifying out of the RAND, because you don't want 100% of your money in RANDs, you try and call currencies yourself. I mean, currency is the most difficult thing in the world. So rather than cash in banks, some people say, well, I fancy the dollar or I fancy the euro. At the end of the day, you probably end up losing money calling currencies overseas. So you've got to go for equity or properties. Bonds, bonds aren't bad investments over time, but they're massively expensive at the moment. So how, do you, how do you buy a bond? You can just go in the investment house. They've all got bond funds. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. They've all got bond funds, so local and domestic. Local and overseas. Basically, no to cash. Yeah, yeah. With 10-year time horizon. Yeah, with 10-year time horizon, okay? Mm. Um, yes, please, big time to equities. Yes. And property, you've got a factor in there. Yeah, I, I would think so. And, you've got to, and, and with property, because you can get a nice long-term loan readily available from the bank, you've got to gear property. Wayne McCurry, thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you for your emails, your suggestions, uh, your questions, your demands as well. Uh, this show deserves to be yours. So carry on telling me what you want us to look at on that email address. Time for me now to push the envelope uh, once again. It was something I was going to post to Kevin Ling's last year. Speaking, you say currencies uh, last week, I beg your pardon, last year. Um, you were saying currencies are the hardest things to call. Yeah. African currency, which one is going to be performing the best against the US dollar by year end? By year end, mm. I wouldn't be surprised if it was the good old-fashioned rand. Really? Yeah. You know, you know why though? Because the rand's got liquidity, so foreigners can get in and get out. The other, the other African currencies is not much liquidity.